Hello everyone, Weather Jamaica here. Welcome to this updated video on the weather across Jamaica and the rest of the Caribbean. It is Monday evening, January 6, 2025. Now before you jump into it, please ensure that you guys like the video. I'd really appreciate it if you guys get this video up to 100 likes. If you don't know by now, that's how the YouTube algorithm works. We all like the video and then the YouTube algorithm pushes the video out to more persons who are in the path of these tropical systems so that we can keep everyone safe, especially during the peak months of Atlantic hurricane season, that's August through to October. Share this video with your friends, your co-workers, your relatives, and even your church brethren, and subscribe if you haven't yet done so. Please ensure that you guys utilize the progress bar that's located at the bottom of the video as well as the timestamps that are located not only in the comment section but the video description so that you can skip to the points in the video that you want to see the most in order to save time because you know that the video is over here where the Jamaica can be very long. Leave a comment down below letting me know what the does like in your year recently. Also feel free to ask any other related question that you might have about the future though within your specific era. Alright, so we're going to be looking at what the next 7 days have in store for us according to the latest Euro and the latest GFS supercomputer models. So as usual, we're going to be focusing our attention on the timestamp right here at the top as we go to the next 168 hours. And we're going to be focusing our attention right here on Jamaica as we look for all of what we see here on the key on the right. And the greens into the yellows, oranges and reds that represents inches of rainfall. So let's see what's going to be happening. Well, I don't expect much change. We can clearly see that heading into Tuesday, we have little to no rainfall across the island for sure. We do have some moisture to the southeast of Jamaica for sure though. Heading into Wednesday, definitely something similar. Little to no rainfall at all across Jamaica. We see more west than anything else. Thursday though, we're starting to get in on some amount of isolated shores, mainly across the north. Friday, we see definitely little to no rainfall for sure. Saturday, something similar. Sunday, we're starting to see some dots of green surface and moisture in and around the island for sure. And then we're going to be stopping it right here at the end of 268 hours. So this is valid for Monday, January 13. And we can see that Jamaica is in the clear. Some isolated shores to the south of the island though, as well as across the Gulf of Mexico. Let us take a look at what the latest GFS is showing. So we can see that as we head into Tuesday for sure, we're going to be having some moisture to the southeast of us. Not much across the island though. Heading into Wednesday, something similar. Little to no rainfall across the island. Some moisture to the north of the island, some moisture to the south of the island. And that's basically it. Heading into Thursday, we see the dots of green represent some isolated shores across the northeast for sure. Just like what the Euro was showing. But as we head back into Friday as well as Saturday, little to nothing at all. Even although the GFS is trying to incorporate some rainfall across eastern Jamaica, we didn't see that on the Euro. It's going to be interesting to see exactly what unfolds. Heading into Sunday, not much of anything. And even Monday, not much of anything either. We're going to be stopping it right here at the end of the 168 hours. So this is valid for Monday, January 13 as well. And we can clearly see something similar to what the Euro was showing. Little to no moisture across Jamaica because of all the whites that we're seeing and some moisture across the southern Caribbean stretching all the way from the eastern Caribbean to Nicaragua as well as some moisture across the Gulf of Mexico and we see that clearly both the year and the GFS models are in consensus with that. And if we take a look at the accumulated precipitation forecast for the next 168 hours, this map from the Euro and this map from the GFS are both showing all the rainfall that's expected from now up until Monday, January 13, 2025. <coughs> Excuse me. And we can clearly see that the most rainfall should be plaguing Belize, section of Guatemala, section of northern Honduras, eastern Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, into Colombia. You can also see an increase in moisture across the eastern to the central Caribbean waters right here. And uh, that's according to the latest Euro. Let us look at the latest GFS. We see something similar and we're seeing all of the reds into the burgundies, into the purples, into the pinks that represents anywhere from one all day to maybe five inches of rainfall, especially right here across Central America, where we could even get in on some amount of isolated flash flooding in some spots. And regarding the next seven days across Jamaica, not much change. We see that northeastern Jamaica is still going to be plagued with the most rainfall as represented by the blues into the greens that represents anywhere from one millimeter all day to maybe 20 millimeters of rainfall according to the euro. GFS a bit more reserved showing anywhere from one all day up to maybe 15 millimeters of rainfall. And clearly we see that the most rainfall should be affecting Portland, Jamaica for sure. Maybe even spilling into sections of St. Andrew, St. Thomas 
and the sections of Saint Mary. And whatever occurs, I'll definitely be here to keep you posted. Either way, we're gonna be moving on. Taking a look at the surface map of the Atlantic for this evening, you can see a ridge of high pressure right here to the north of Puerto Rico, another ridge of high pressure right here to the north of the western portion of Africa. And we know those are responsible for sending a lot of the easterly trade winds across the main development region into the Caribbean. We can also make out that cold front right here, reaching all the way from the northern portion of the North Atlantic all the way down to the north of the eastern Caribbean. And we can see the other frontal system that's definitely doing a number on the United States as we speak. Lots of snow, rainfall, icy weather conditions bring a lot of poor outages to portion of the U.S. as we speak. And we can make out that trough that has been plaguing portion of the southwestern Caribbean for the past week. And if we take a look at the visible satellite images of the Atlantic before the sun went down, we can make out all of these entities. The clouds associated with the frontal system right here, pushing off to the east that was affecting portion of the east coast, now affecting Florida, the northern Bahamas, the southeastern Gulf. We can also make out the low level flow of the low to mid level clouds being steered from east west, all courtesy of the ridge of high pressure to the north. The clouds associated with the trough, trough now dissipating across the eastern portion of Nicaragua but definitely going to be firing up again in the next 24 hours and we can make out that frontal system that we spoke about reaching all the way from the northern portion of North Atlantic all the way down to the north of the eastern Caribbean. We'll be talking more about the rest of the Caribbeans over there later on. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, let us focus our attention on the prediction that was made in yesterday's video about the weather across Jamaica for today. Well, today this should be yeah first monday january 6 2025 well no specific forecast was made but we know the drill it was stated that would have had dry conditions all across the island and as such no post was made at all especially considering that we didn't have much in the way of cloud cover or rainfall across the island this visible satellite image right here is showing everything up to the point at which we lost the sunlight and we can see that we didn't have much cloud cover or ice literature activity across the island at all and the infrared close-up satellite images confirm this don't even see any thunderstorm clouds or anything like that even taking a look at the barbican camera from see jamaica's youtube channel showing that we're definitely receiving some sunny skies right here people in their vehicles going about their business nothing significant in terms of bad weather today at all and this should continue for majority of this week. Even the accumulated precipitation forecast for the next, well, for the past 24 hours are showing that we didn't get in on much and we have anything across the island today. Look at all of the whites that represent the low end of the scale on the key right here at the bottom. Little to no rainfall at all. Maybe some dots of rainfall in the mountains. The, well, maybe the Blue Mountain Peak or areas to the north of St. Andrew. That's basically it. And if we take a look at the very latest still image from the Weather Nerds website, let's reload this so we have the very latest. And clearly the very latest is showing 0005 UTC, which is actually 7.05 p.m. So this just came out 11 minutes ago, considering that it's 7.16 p.m. now. And we can clearly see that there is not much of anything across the island. Just some high serious clouds right here streaking off towards the northeast. Nothing new right there. And if we take a look at the latest cube and Doppler radar image, we can make out that there's nothing affecting the island as we speak. There's some dots of rainfall right here to the east and north of the Little Cayman Islands right there. And if we take a look at the Guantanamo Bay Cuban Naval Radar imagery, not seeing much of anything across Cuba, western portion of Haiti, or the northeastern portion of Jamaica at all. If we take a look at the Cayman Radar, however, we can make out some isolated shores near Little Cayman, the waters to the north of Grand Cayman, as well as to the west southwest of the Grand Cayman era too. Not much affecting Western Jamaica at all. If we take a look at the crossroads cam, we can see that there's not much happening right now in terms of bad weather, and this should continue all week for sure. We see people in their vehicles going about their business. You can see people right here waiting on the bus stops for vehicles or bus. We, sh we shall see exactly what unfolds. Maybe they'll get it. You'll find out if you actually go over to see Jamaica right now. I'd like for you to keep in mind that these live streams are right here for your viewing pleasure. So just go over there, subscribe, because they're planning on increasing the amount of cameras that they have in and around the island. So if I were, I'd definitely subscribe to this so that I don't miss out. If we take a look at the temperatures right now, 
we can see that we have 25 degrees Celsius in both Montego Bay and Kingston. And by about 4 a.m. on Tuesday, temperature should dip down to about 23 degrees Celsius in Montego Bay, 22 degrees Celsius in Kingston. And if we take a look at the temperature forecast for tomorrow, this map from the GFS is valid for 18 a.m. on Tuesday, which is actually 1 p.m. on Tuesday. And we can see Jamaica right here embedded in some yellows and some slight oranges. That represents up to 1 degree Celsius above normal temperatures. And we know the normal temperature for the month of January across Jamaica is around 86.5 degrees Fahrenheit. And when that's converted to degrees Celsius, that's about 30.2 degrees Celsius. So we should be receiving anywhere from 30 to 31 degrees Celsius at most for Jamaica's temperature on Tuesday. And as stated in yesterday's video, we're going to restate this, especially considering that this is valid for tomorrow. There are going to be maintenance or emergency outage advisories for sections of St. Mary for Tuesday, January 7. We're talking about Sunside, Trinity, Tenneth Street in Port Maria. And it also states here from the JBS that the town of Port Maria will experience one hour disruption from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. And again from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. So if you live or work in those areas or if you have friends or relatives who live or work in those areas, let them know that power outages are coming their way. And considering that there are going to be power outages, we know that the temperature could definitely be exacerbated because we know that we won't have our fan or our AC to cool us down. So follow these tips to beat the heat. It states here, dress down, wear lightweight clothing and use sunscreen. Check on others, including medical, well, including children, elderly people with medical conditions and pets. It states also be cool, stay indoors and make use of fans and air conditioners. Avoid alcohol and caffeine as they can make dehydration worse. Limit non-essential strenuous activity during the hottest parts of the day. And I cannot stress enough how important it is to always stay hydrated. Drink lots of water throughout the day even if you're not thirsty. Put away those sugary drinks, drink water instead. If we take a look at the dry air map, unfortunately we still don't have the Sahara and dust map to show, still glitched out. But clearly we know the dry air is represented by the yellows, the oranges, reds and whites within those reds. And we can see it being represented here across the main development region. The central to the eastern Caribbean, the southwestern Atlantic into the northwestern Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, of the east coast of the United States. And we see a lot of moist air across the waters of the southern portion of the basin. Below the equator, we also see some moist air across the central to the western or southwestern Caribbean. And even right here across the United States and the northeastern waters. And we know the dry air can definitely limit the amount of moisture that we have in and around the island. It's, but clearly, the waters in and around Jamaica, especially down here across the South Western Caribbean, definitely experiencing, <coughs> definitely experiencing an abundance of moist air. If you take a look at the wave forecast for tomorrow, clearly the majority of the Caribbean should be getting in on some light shades of blues to dark shades of blues. That represents anywhere from 0 0.5 for meter wave height all the way up to 1.5 meter wave height. And that's because of the winds that are expected. Clearly, we see more dull greens, the slightly bright greens. They represent anywhere from 5, all the way up to 15 knots for the most part. On Jamaica's north coast tomorrow, up to 5 knot winds. Jamaica's south coast tomorrow, 8 knot winds. Maybe across the southeastern waters, that's where the wind should be the strongest, up to 12 knots for sure. And if we take a closer look at Jamaica regarding the winds that are expected, we see more of an northerly flow on the north coast, not so strong on the south coast at all. And maybe we might just get in on some isolated shores across the north, even although the rainfall forecast is not showing that. And who knows, maybe we might just get in on some afternoon rainfall on the south coast because that's where all of the air could be piling up. And we see that the upper level winds are still coming in from the southwest. So it's going to be interesting to see exactly what unfolds tomorrow. Either way, this map from the Euro and this map from the GFS are both showing 9 a.m. on Tuesday. And what do we see? Some dots of blues across the northern portion of the island maybe some isolated shores according to this euro model we also see some rainfall to the southeast representing a traffic kind of pattern for sure taking a look at the gfs we don't see the dots of blues across the north but we do see some well we see right here a blue speck across the waters to the east of the island we also see that rainfall to the southeast of the island very interesting forecast and if we take a look at the afternoon forecast now this is 2 p.m. according to the Euro. This is 2 p.m. according to the GFS. And what do we see on both maps? Some blues represent rainfall across the east. Maybe Portland, maybe 
Now during St. Thomas may be spilling into St. Andrew. A very interesting forecast even although the year is trying to incorporate some of the dots of blues across central Jamaica. We also see that there's still gonna be rainfall out to sea to the south and east of the island for sure. A very interesting forecast either way in terms of the accumulated precipitation forecast. Clearly both the year and the GFS has uh, some slight up to at least 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.06 of an inch is <laughs> of a rainfall across the east those slight greens very interesting we'll see exactly what unfolds either way this little to no rainfall kind of thing is definitely normal for the month of january in kingston we usually receive close to um, an inch of rainfall that's about 20 millimeters of rainfall right there in montego bay we usually receive up to three inches of rainfall that's about 75 millimeters of rainfall and I'd like for you to keep in mind that if you'd like to find out what your specific parish usually receives for the month of january or for the entire year, you can visit weatherandclimate.com and that website will show you that information. And we can use this nice little graphic right here that converts rainfall from inches to millimeters that we receive on the rain gauge. We know that one inch of rainfall is about the same as 25 millimeters of rainfall. So you can do the math yourself. All right, so that's it for the forecast across Jamaica. Let us focus your attention on the rest of the Caribbean. So we can see the abundance of moisture passing through a section of Hispaniola, the water is south of there, even portion of Puerto Rico got on some of the action today. You also see some moisture pushing into portion of the Eastern Caribbean as we speak. You see some moisture affecting the Yucatan too. You see the usual thunderstorm activity across Colombia. You see the frontal system plaguing portions of Florida as we speak, as well as the Eastern United States on a whole. And we see a lot of moisture across uh, the southern main development region associated with the intertropical convergent zone and if you take a look at the Doppler radar images of the northeastern Caribbean let's see what's happening over there you can clearly see some moisture to the southeast of Puerto Rico some moisture um, near Antigua and Barbuda affecting portion of Guadeloupe eastern Dominica getting in on some of the action we also see some moisture right here to the east of Dominica affecting sections of the waters to the east of Martinique section of Barbados definitely got in on some isolated shore activity today some of this pushing towards St. Vincent and the Grenadines not seeing much across Grenada right now but we saw some of the moisture right here to the passing to the north of Tobago not seeing much happening across Trinidad at all but if we take a look at the weather view of Doppler radar images we can see some moisture across the Yucatan associated with that cloud cover that we mentioned we can also see some rainfall right here to the east of Nicaragua some rainfall passing to the north of the ABC Islands. Rainfall associated with that frontal system pushing in from the northwest and pushing towards Florida as we speak. And if we scroll down, we can even make out some isolated shores across section of Colombia. And if we take a look at where the rainfall is expected within the next one for hours, this map from the GFS and this map from the Euro are both showing all the rainfall that's expected from now until 10 p.m. on Tuesday. And we can clearly see that the Yucatan's eastern portion should be getting on some of the action rainfall for sure. We can also see some rainfall in store for Belize, northern Guatemala, section of Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, Colombia, section of the Eastern Caribbean, anywhere from Guadeloupe southward. We're talking about Dominica, Martinique, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines, Grenada, Barbados. We can also see some isolated shores in store for maybe St. Martin, St. Kitts, and Nevis, section of Anguilla, Antigua, and Barbuda, Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, the waters to the south of Haiti and Jamaica for sure. And even some isolated shores for section of northwestern Cuba. And we know that when both maps on the Euro and the GFS are in consensus like this, the chances of it actually happening are much higher. Alright, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching.